Well, it's been a long time since I've virtually seen all of you. How long's it been, like nine months this time? I just had other commitments that needed to be filled, plus my interest and overall motivation for making videos just went downhill when I left. But since I'm on break for a while, this gives me the time to make at least one or two videos. I honestly really do like making videos and talking and discussing things on a deep level on this channel. It's what keeps me sane whenever I have nothing to do, and it's something I really miss doing since I left. I really want to get back into the swing of things on this channel, while also making sure that it doesn't overshadow my personal life, and making sure I don't go even more mentally insane than I've become in the past few months. It honestly feels really good to be doing this again, and I hope that even if I have to leave, which I most likely will, it won't be for this long and I won't regret doing it. But with all that nonsense, since you don't care about out of the way. I thought for my return, I would look at a show that doesn't get much talk around the community, but is really a gem in my opinion, Clarence. From my personal experience with the show, it really is just a lighthearted show about three childhood friends navigating fairly normal, but at the same time cartoonish situation. It's definitely something that's not for everyone, especially since it came at a time where more and more of these story driven, beautifully drawn and deep cartoons were popping up. And while there's nothing wrong with that, in fact, I do like a lot of those shows. I really enjoy something that doesn't need a lot of context going into it, and is something that you can turn on and not have to be extremely emotionally invested in the characters to watch, which is part of the appeal of Clarence. So without much delay, let's get into today's episode, Belson's Sleepover. The episode begins with Clarence opening up his locker, attempting to find an eraser, instead finding a letter. I do like it when episodes start off like this, with a simple, down-to-earth opener. It's something that really enhances the slice-of-life nature of the show, starting off with something that not only these characters, but the audience watching would do on a regular basis. And just as quickly as it starts, we get into the meat and potatoes of the episode. You are cordially invited to a sleepover at Belson's house. Whoever makes it through the night without getting pranked will receive my new Acedia game system, currently not available in the US until next year. So RSVP with my mom for Friday night for a night of fun and games. This episode puts heavy emphasis on Belson's wealth and how he can use it to his advantage in many different ways. One being that he can get gaming consoles that aren't even supposed to release a year from purchase. Don't wanna go. I hate Belson. Simo, don't say that. Belson's in our little gang. You know, like the ones in old movies. Yeah, this is not gonna be good. Firstly, Sumo's expression here is golden. Secondly, it really interests me to see how differently each character views the situation, both from the perspective of each individual character and the stereotype said characters would fall in. Clarence being Clarence is optimistic about the prospect of a sleepover at Belson's. Sumo hating Belson obviously doesn't want to go because he thinks Belson is a jerk, which he is. And Jeff, while not expressing his disdain for Belson, isn't too optimistic about what might go down at the sleepover. Over. Referring to what many cartoons seem to be doing at the moment, each character would practically be simping for the idea of winning the gaming console. Because that's what kids do, right? How do you do, fellow kids? Rather, the writers chose for each character to react how that character would react, which is something this episode does a good job of. I'm also a big fan of the scary theme this episode goes for. It's something that isn't just done for the gimmick, but is actually something that carries the episode along. So Clarence and the rest of the boys who got an invite arrive at Belson's house and are greeted by his mother. Oh my. Oh, look who's here. Come in, guys. She's not your typical rich mom character, though. While she does have a lot of money, she actually wants Belson to be a responsible person and actually cares about him. And this is coming from watching other episodes that she and Belson interact in. In this episode, she gives him chores and actually shows concern for the fact that she thought Belson didn't have any friends. I was starting to think he didn't have any friends. No, yeah, we all love Belson. Yuck. Jeff, no, don't take out the trash. That's Belson's one chore in the world. I'm really glad that they didn't make her the stereotypical rich parent who doesn't care about their child, because that trope has been done before and really hasn't been built upon since it was first utilized in media. Not only that, but there's a specific moment in this episode that really sheds new light on Belson's character, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Check out my new game, the Acedia 64. Welcome back, Bill 
I gotta say that I like how they managed to mix in a Sega reference with a Nintendo Wii reference. It just adds a little more meta to the joke that I didn't realize on my first watch. A lot of the jokes in this episode are really funny in fact. Sumo's reactions are especially funny and actually add a little more to his reaction in the beginning. Because while he thinks Belson is a jerk, he still does have interest in the gaming console, as most kids would, but not in a stereotypical way. Especially considering that Sumo doesn't come from a privileged background, which you know if you watch the show. I also like like how when Belson makes a snarky comment about his mom asking him to do a chore, even Clarence doesn't find it too amusing. It hints on the idea that while Clarence thinks more highly of Belson than other characters, he still does somewhat recognize that his actions aren't always the best. By the way, I, I, I didn't write this in the script, I really appreciate how much the background characters seem to do despite them being background characters. Like some of their comments in this episode are golden. And if he really was kidnapped? Is that a bad thing? I did not sign up for this. I found where we watch movies and eat and s'mores. I am so done with this. As the night moves forward, we get to our first casualty, as Brady gets enough salt on his plate to perfectly describe how I felt when I realized that Kanye wasn't dropping Donda when he said he was going to, and the fact that he had some rappers recording lines the day before it was supposed to drop. Like, why give me the hope of you dropping your 10th album, then delaying it, then have our hopes of it dropping then pretty much be ruined, then you delaying it again, essentially making me believe this is gonna be another life of Pablo. So the boys get to sleep, and since Belson hasn't pranked a lot of people, he decides to launch a plan to get all of them out at once. The plan works as all of them fall for it, except for... There's no killer. The book is made up and the videos are fake. The killer's just Belson in a mask. <laughs> you all got pranked. That's the last straw. We're gonna get Belson a real sleepover. A sleepover he'll never forget. Uh, we definitely shouldn't kill him, but we should prank him. Upon realizing that they've been duped again, they plan to get Belson back. So remember that little piece of info I said that put Belson's character into a bit of perspective? Well, throughout the episode, Jeff has been very insistent on helping Belson's mom around the house while the other kids do other things, leading into this scene. He really could use a father figure. I mean, he has a dad, but he's just always traveling. <laughs> Let's pursue this. How does it make you feel? I think when it comes to scenes in cartoons that I have a great appreciation for, this is up there, despite it only being a few seconds long. It's a situation that is present in today's time, something that must at least be on Belson's mind at some points as well. It makes me wonder if this is what makes Belson the person he is. Now, I haven't watched the whole series, so I can't say whether the writers actually reference this again in the show, but I do feel like this is a great thing that they did to set themselves up for an interesting dynamic dynamic to Belson's character. Hey Belson! You forgot to take out the trash! They end up defeating Belson by throwing trash onto him, which has been a running theme in the episode, so I'm glad they brought it back in a clever way. Belson, under the assumption that he has pranked everyone at once, has a real big surprise in score for himself. Not all of us! It's true! He knew it was you the whole time. The episode ends with Clarence, Sumo, and Jeff almost dying and reminiscing about what happened, and that was Belson's sleepover. When it comes to the episodes of Clarence that I've watched and enjoyed, I feel that this is one of those that provides me with the most in terms of character interactions, humor, and just overall good storytelling. I think that a lot of the characters, even the minor ones, were extremely entertaining to watch, and Belson as a character is certainly something that I look forward to whenever I go back to the show, just to see how he acts in situations and what the writers do with him, because he's certainly not your average rich character. Overall, this is a good episode, I highly recommend it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.